The last video we mixed the drums. I've done a little bit of panning since then um, and level adjusting. So pan the toms apart, put the hi-hat on the one side and then uh, spread apart the overheads. Did some re-leveling. We'll probably adjust those as we uh, continue. But I want to go ahead and work into bass and guitars and voice today. Okay, so let's check out the bass next. I'm going to solo the bass. Go ahead and find a part where the bass is playing. So this is a DI bass, it's direct in, just raw pickup sound. And um, it's not bad, you know, it's not too bad DI. I might throw um, some sort of amp modeling software if you have it. I have it, but I'm not gonna use it today because I'm trying to use the basic plugins. But um, let's see here, maybe some EQ might be helpful. Um, I'm gonna grab the EQ7 band and fish around for frequencies basically and see where the, the brightness and the darkness uh, kind of the good and not so good parts of the tone are so there's some brightness around like 4k 5k a lot of muddiness down in the 200 ish area What I might do is do a little high pass. Depends on the sound of bass I'm going for. A lot of basses have bright elements, um, and then some bass players like the more of the low end thumpy sound without a lot of pickup or bright string tone. I might try to find middle ground. A little bit of brightness still in there. Um, all right, cool. I might also do a high pass filter at like 40 hertz just to get some of the low sub frequencies that are kind of messy out of the way. Okay, so I kind of like that. I'm going to compress it next using the Bomb Factory 76. I want to get some attenuation though. I want this meter to start reading some bass notes so I can have to crank up the input. Brought up the volume a lot. I'm going to play with my attack. That's a quick attack time. That's a shorter attack time. Shorter. Anyway, I like to use a lot of compression on the bass, sometimes limiting too, to make the bass notes just kind of even dynamically bomb 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 even if there's kind of a little bit of a dynamic range in the bass players playing I kind of don't want too much of that let's move on to guitar land I'm gonna keep the bass panned in the center of course so I've got two electric guitar parts that I recorded and two acoustic guitar parts that I recorded um, both are kind of just playing rhythm stuff most of the time so I've got a guitar left and a guitar right I also have acoustic guitar one and two, basically just overdubs, just two takes of the same guitar strumming part. So it's just two takes, and that the reason I did two guitars on each, if they're playing rhythm and chords, I like to pan them apart. If I've played both guitars all the way through twice, they're not going to match up perfectly rhythmically at all. So I want that though. When I pan it out to the sides, you're going to hear the guitar get super wide. So there's mono, both guitars, and then when I go wide, it just kind of gives it this really wide element. So we'll start with the acoustic guitars. Um, first of all, acoustic guitars always need to be EQ'd. Guitars in general usually do because they'll they have a lot of low end information that gets in the way of the bass. So I'm going to carve out the low end on both the acoustic guitar tracks quite a bit actually. I'm really just wanting the sprinkly pick noise of the guitar. I don't want the, the bassy, you know, sound. I don't need bassy acoustic guitar. I just need clicky clicky, slappy slappy, sparkles, basically, is what I'm going for. The sparkly elements, the high frequency elements of the acoustic. So that might be a little extreme, but I also have a bass, a piano, and 
another electric guitar track going. So I don't need all this, every song, I don't need every instrument in the world playing the same frequencies. Okay, cool. So I'm going to copy that over to the other plugin and listen to these together and balance them out. Both speakers. Okay. All right, now I might compress them both too with a Bomb Factory 76. Okay, that seems to work. Copy that over to both sides. And I'll come back later, circle around for dynamics. All right, let's check out guitars, electric guitars. Lots of bass. First of all, same deal. I'm just going to copy my EQ7 band from over there and then make it less extreme. So back that filter off a little bit. So I uh, trimmed off some of the low ends on the electric guitars. I've got those panned apart, but not hard left and right. But the acoustic guitars are panned very hard left and right. So you can hear like the scratchy acoustic and then the electrics kind of way out the sides of the speakers. Okay, cool. That's where I'm, where I'm wanting things to sit. Let's go to piano. Okay, so piano's got a lot of low frequency information too. A lot of low stuff, um, which is okay, but uh, let's throw some EQ on there and just get some of the low lows out. And I might circle back around. Another thing is if I do this a lot and take all the low end off the sounds, sometimes the mix gets a little muddy. Or I'm sorry, some, sometimes the mix gets a little too bright. So that can be problematic. So I might have to adjust these later down the road. But I know I just that's a little too dark sound in there. Okay, that's one mic. This one over here's got a little bit more high-end information. Must be on the higher strings. I have to take out some of the mid-frequency stuff. And the right. Oh, there, that's why. See if I can find some. There we go. There's some brightness. I'm trying to get the brights out of this this one side, and then more darks on the other side. Get some of that 500 hertz mud out of there. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, and then um, I'll probably compress this on the sum track of the piano. Let's come over here and put the compressor on the sum track. Get it working there. Okay, those are panned apart. All right, let's see how things sit together with everything else. Okay, um, everything's kind of loud, so I might quiet everything down. But the next up is the voice. The voice needs some loudness. Um, it's lonely out. In okay, so first of all, I'm going to put an EQ on there um, and uh, listen around for frequencies. It's lonely out in space. So, whoa. On such a Nothing down there I really want to hear. So, I'm going to have a low pass, high pass filter, rolling everything off basically below like 150. It's lonely out in space. 150 ish. Yeah, like 150. There we go. Then we'll look, listen around for other frequencies. It's lonely out in space. There's the mid range. 
stuff. On such a time. Okay, and then listen back and forth between no plug-in and plug-in. On such a time. It's lonely out in space. Okay, so that's an improvement for sure. Now let's compress. Bomb factory 76. Heavy compression here on the voice. It's lonely out in space. And a lot of output gain. Let's try quick and slow such attacks. A time. It's lonely out in space. On such a time. Okay, so I'm usually going around like 5 to 7 or 8 dB max. Heavy compression with the voice here just to really juice it up and make it pop out of the mix because it's very important that this is front and center. Still, I might throw another stage of uh, compression on the voice on the vocal sum track just to get that a little bit more up in the mix. It's lonely out in space. Okay, so always making adjustments as you hear stuff. What I'm going to do here is leave the vocal sum all the way up. I'm going to tear down piano, tear down guitar, tear down bass, tear down drums. And I'm going to start with just the vocal track. It's lonely out in space. Okay, now here comes the drums. On such a time. It's lonely out in space. Make sure those two things are kind of happy. Bring us a bass. On such a time. Put a little compression on the bass sum just to get the bass up a little bit more too. It's lonely out in space. Let's bring in the sparkly guitars. On such a time. It's lonely out in and space. Piano. Okay, all right, all right, so I'm getting there. Um, I'm always gonna check my reference mixes. I never knew which ones were mine. Now he's okay, I notice how big the voice is and crispy and clear the voice is there. Okay, the voices are huge. I mean, the drums and stuff are huge here, but like. I never knew the voice is just so clear on these references. When I go back to my mix. It's lonely out in space. I feel like I need a little bit more voice, but bump the voice up in the mix. It's lonely out. So I need to put a uh, reverb on my short verb. Return. So I'm gonna go and pull in a some kind of short verb sound. Uh, rooms, maybe something small, some kind of small bathroom sounding. Something bright, large plates, large warm vocal uh, chamber, large, large, large music. Medium bright hall. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on the snare or maybe just on the voice. It's lonely out in space. It's lonely out in space. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. And I think it's gonna be a long. So I want this to be a little bit smaller in size. The short And I think it's gonna be a long. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Okay, it's a little bit shorter of a verb. So I need short verb, long verb, and I also need some delay here. So I'm gonna grab the delay. What's the basic delay? H delay, I guess. Nope, that's not basic. Um, basic plugins, basic plugins. Um, mod delay, I think, is the one. And I think it's gonna be a long, long. Okay, so that's a lot. But let's see if it works. And I think it's gonna be. Obviously, it's way too much, but I'm gonna dial it down. 
And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. And I think it's gonna be a long. Okay, dial back that short verb, get some long. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Okay. Wow, now that there's way too much verb on everything, I gotta come back through and turn down all of these on the drums that I had up earlier and I couldn't hear because there was no reverb. Little overheads here, we'll start with the drums. It sets the drums back a little bit. When I add, start adding, adding verb to the overheads and the snare of the drum set, it pushes the drum drums back in the room a bit and makes it sound a little bit more um, bigger, the mix does. go. Let's see what's going on with the acoustic guitars. Okay, there's the acoustics, electrics. Don't want them to get lost. Okay, okay. Piano. Still feeling like my piano is a little dark overall. I'm gonna go back in here with my EQs and the piano. Okay, maybe take my reverb or my EQs off that piano and see if I did anything bad. Definitely easier to hear, it's brighter. Okay, now my sounds are working a lot better. I have some extra harmonies that I mixed in here as well. So I might be creative and leave the scratch vocal track in during maybe the choruses to beef it up a bit. Um, that's going to be editing stuff down here. Um, another thing I would probably do working forward is mixing these vocal harmonies that I recorded. So a lot of times I'll just bring in the EQ from the first vocal track and pan these apart. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. And I think it's gonna be a So on the choruses, I'll probably leave in the original scratch vocal track. All right, so um, to get this finished, uh, you, of course, would keep mixing and making this better and better and better as you listen to it more. But um, we'll do a quick master before we bounce this bad boy. So what I'm gonna do is load in an EQ, bring in an EQ on the... Um, Submix track. I'm going to do my mastering chain here real quickly and I'm going to grab a few um, or one to start out with of the Maxim plugins which I'll use for limiting. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is listen to my references and put my references up at full blast because uh, I turn them down and uh, I'm going to listen to the frequency content here. So that's way too loud, but So I'll be listening to frequencies, high frequencies, low frequencies, kick, snare, bass, comparing the vocal tracks. I'm going to do that and I'm going to make EQ adjustments with my EQ. Um, the next thing I'm going to do after I get EQs really happy there, I'm going to bring that those reference tracks back up to Unity Gain and start using the Maxim plugin to um, 
bring up the volume of these uh, of these uh, of my mix. So I'm gonna bring down the threshold. It's gonna be a long, long time till touchdown brings me round again to find I'm not the So I'm not seeing much attenuation yet, which is great. I wanna stage this. Um, basically I'm gonna have like multiple limiters, multiple maxims, one on top of another. It's gonna be a long, long time. And I'm watching my attenuation and how much threshold I'm using. Only want one or two dB of attenuation on the loudest parts of the song. So I might need to find the loudest part of the song here, probably this chorus out. It's gonna be a long, long time. And I'm also listening to frequencies because this is going to affect the tonal sound of your, your mix as well. But the goal here is to get my mix to sound exactly like these references in volume and in frequency content. So all the instruments sounding similar and brights and dark sounds and all that kind of stuff kind of matching the best I can. Okay, cool. Um, let's start there. And I want to have my region go all the way to the end of this track, right there. A little bit of dead air there at the beginning, so I'll scoot this in. Okay, cool. All right, now at this point, I'm going to file, bounce to disk, do multiple mono. Nope, I'm going to do interleaved. I'm going to go with 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. Before I do that, I'm going to check my limiters on my submix track here and make sure that the dither is on on the final limiter. You can do your dithering, which basically down samples to 16 bit if you're mixing at 48. Um, you can do this dithering down here on the last plugin. That's usually what I do on mastering. So now that we've got that, let's make sure our region is still selected. Um, region selected, bounce to disk, and do wave. We'll do interleaved, um, 16, 44.1, and we'll call this uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, mix one, and let's save this in the bounce files and bounce. Cool. All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for being here. Um, that concludes our mixing project um, for the uh, video series. So keep producing, uh, keep mixing, and try hard. We'll see you next time. Peace.